Welcome to Das Boat, season two, Dos Boat. Now, in season one, we bought a boat on the internet, sight unseen. This is what we got. This is my boat. I'm selling from neutral. I think we just broke the ship here. That boat traveled to five different fisheries in three different states across more than 1,400 miles and somehow, what was that? Survived the journey. For season two, we've got a new old boat. We like to call it Dose Boat, one well stocked with fishing memories. It was owned by my childhood fishing mentor, a feller by the name of John Gary. We're gonna drag this classic craft across the upper Midwest, hand her off to some of our favorite anglers, give her a few upgrades, oh, take her to places she has and has not been before, and maybe oh, yeah. catch a few Ooh, fish. Got a muskie. And like last season, there will probably be some bad ideas along the way. Oh shit, the trailer's rolled. Wow. This is Das Boat. New boats are pretty. They're ripe with possibility, things yet to come. They're safe, comfortable, usually reliable, but let's be honest, they're sterile. Boats take on the characteristics of the place they've been and the people who have boarded them. This boat is from Middle Lake in Twin Lake, Michigan, the same place where I'm from, and it happens to be just about the same age as me. In a roundabout way, I came to live down the beach from this boat through a story that actually involves yet another boat. This was a summer cottage. Everything here was summer cottages. My old man came out to look at this house, and there was a boat sitting here on the beach. He gets in the boat and goes fishing. He claims that he caught a five-pound largemouth out of the lake and decided at that very moment to buy this house. I believe there was a bass. I believe it was a nice one. I have a very difficult time with the, the, the five-poundness of this fish. But, you know, he caught a big fish, bought the house. Thanks to that boat and that alleged five-pound bass, I came to be raised down the beach from John Gary and his StarCraft boat. As for John Gary, he took care of all the neighborhood kids when it came to fish know-how and fishing gear. And when we were little, little kids, like if you got your rod tangled up or needed a hook or whatever and your old man wasn't around, you went to John Gary's house. As for his boat, it was a 14-foot StarCraft Bassmaster, manufactured in 1973, the year before I was born. When John passed away, that boat came to live in my mom's pole barn. When we decided to do a new season of Das Boat in the Midwest, I could not think of a better vehicle to carry the show. It's got that familiar rattle when you hit a wave. I had it, like in my head, it was much, much bigger. <laughs> and they fished everything in this boat. He had it highly accessorized of just shit he made himself. He was mostly like a pan fisherman. You can see where he opened his beer bottles. He uh, kept a Frisbee right there because you could put night crawlers, take them out of your worm box, put them on the Frisbee, be fishing with them, and then they wouldn't escape the lip of the Frisbee. Even these, these are original John Gary. Put some garden hose, protect the rope from where it rubs. Nothing ever costing more than a dollar. I yeah, I don't think it's been seriously in the water since 2000. This registration was valid. So here, I was born in 74. This registration thing is valid until December 31st, 1974. This is looking a little played out. Spare is a little dead. Not quite street legal, but it'll get there. I can't think of a better way to honor John Gary and the things he did for me and other fish-loving kids around the lake than to resuscitate this old boat and hand it off 
to a new generation of anglers across the Midwest. To start, we're gonna head about an hour and a half south of my mom's place to the port town of South Haven, right on Lake Michigan. You have to respect big water, but if we find a weather window and get lucky, we might be able to troll the offshore depths for Lake Michigan's most iconic big fish, lake trout. Dudes that fish, like a lot of guys are into the salmon, the imported non-native species, but lake trout are from here, man. They're like an original. They used to be a, like one of the big four, like commercial species, you know? There was a big commercial fishery for lake trout. They fed part of the nation on these lake trout. Eventually through pollution and whatnot, the lake trout got depleted. That is a story that has a happy ending. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's what we're after. Native fish, lake trout. Oh shit. The traders rolled. Wow. That's, oh no, 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 no. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've never seen this happen. Something you never want to see, which is the boat going down the road but not on the trader. <laughs> Man, that survived pretty well. I was already aware of needing a second strap, but this, <laughs> this strap, hmm, don't make them like they used to. Start from scratch. We're going high tech, heavy duty on the tie downs. So we're gonna replace the winch line. Sometimes a little catastrophe motivates you to do some work immediately that you might otherwise put off. After dialing in some basic safety measures, I'm back on the road towards South Haven. This town lives or dies by the lake it borders, and the reestablishment of lake trout populations over the past years has brought back a native vitality to both the town and the lake. And I don't know anyone more excited about lake trout and lake trout fishing than my friend Grant Gully. That's a natural reproduction natural fish. Reproduction. The boat set the hook because we were moving, and that's your boat. <laughs> He's a charter captain who fishes the big lake out of big, fancy boats. I'm gonna meet him at Hood Outdoors here in South Haven. He's got like an archery shop, tackle shop, fab shop, and we're gonna get Dose Boat ready to roll. What's happening, guys? What's up, brother? The moment we were going down the road and this boat was not uh, in fact, on the trailer. <laughs> They're like off the trailer, but Bro. still going down the road. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. I was saying, like, this, this boat hasn't seen fresh aluminum <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> oh my word. I know you were nervous about this boat on Lake Michigan. Still am. Well, the weather's good. And two, I have ac actual proof that this boat has been on Lake Michigan. Because how else would you explain? I don't think I've ever seen a downrigger like this. So why would that exist if this hadn't been on Lake Michigan? And I know for a fact that John Gary used to take this out fish perch, 100 feet of water. That's the starting point of where <laughs> we're gonna be tomorrow is 100 foot. Yeah. So this is a tried and true big lake vessel, man. Well, we're gonna put some fish in it. <laughs> it's gonna get fun. Let's call this phase one, the, like this land. This boat was not designed to have that heavy of an engine. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off the old wood. It's rotted, doesn't have any strength left to it. We're gonna encase this whole transom in quarter inch thick aluminum, weld it, bolt it through. That will hold a four stroke 40 horse motor. We're gonna Put new lights on the trailer, grease the bearings, get a, a spare tire for you. Install some safety devices in the boat. This boat doesn't have any electronics on it. Do you want something on it? Yeah, we're gonna need to put a, I don't know, what are you, we're fish, finder, need a fish finder. I mean, yeah, beneficial. Better give you everything you need, man. It's GPS, chirp. 
Not yet, I don't have any excuses. Putting the pressure on now. Uh, you know, when you're younger, people would be like, what kind of boats he got? would be like, I don't know, fishing boat. <laughs> this is a fishing boat. This is a fishing boat. <laughs> a fishing boat. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. It'll be a short night, early morning. Oh, yeah, what time do you like to get up? You like to get out there in the cold, gray light of dawn? Well, we should get there as early as possible. First light? Yeah. yeah. After a full day of work in the shop, DOS boat's actually looking pretty damn good. Grant's trepidation, though, is understandable. The plan is to head out more than five miles offshore to look for Lakers. If the seas kick up, this boat is bound to get a little squirrely. But forecasts look good, and I'm as confident as can be. As far as I'm concerned, that cold gray light of dawn can't come soon enough. Daybreak on Lake Michigan can make even the staunchest cynic feel a twinge of the spiritual, especially on a morning like this one. Everybody knows, or better know, Gordon Lightfoot's The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, in which he describes Lake Michigan as steaming like a young man's dreams. This is what he was talking about. Now, we need to head out and see what kind of mood the fish gods are in. Lake trout, which are actually a species of char, are deep water fish, sometimes sulking more than 400 feet below the surface. This time of year, they are hanging out in about 100 feet of water. If we don't get our lures down to that depth, we're not going to catch anything. The only way to keep a lure at that depth while trolling is with a downrigger. A downrigger is a pretty simple mechanism, basically just a winch, a cable, and a big weight. You attach your line to the downrigger weight using a pinch release clip, lower the weight and lure down to where the fish are hanging out, and slow troll until a fish hits the lure. Then the line pulls free of the release and the downrigger weight, so you just fight it like you would any other fish. When Grant is fishing out of his usual big old fancy boat, he trolls over a dozen rods at a time. In total, his lures are spread out over a width of about 300 feet. In Das boat, we can run about five rods and only cover about 80 feet, which means we have to work a little harder to find our fish. We're digging bottom with that diver, so it's digging along the bottom, kicking up that sand, and this is spinning around and slamming in the bottom. You can tell, I mean, like, we rubbed all that chrome off of it. We want it to actually dig right in the sand, hitting the top of those sand ripples as we're going by it. Dredge and bottom now, man. Yeah. In the history of the state, if you look back, lake trout for a long time was the primary commercial fish. Yeah, it was for a long time. It was the it was the number one game fish too. But you know, commercial fishing and the lamprey kind of wiped them out. Are we like traveling to find fish or waiting for the fish to switch what to turn on? I think right now we're traveling to find fish. To I find. think there's fish out here. We got to put something in front of them. But you know, you're trolling, so you're, you're covering a lot of ground. You know, you're, you're able to move in and out. We started in 100 foot of water and we're working our way out. One modification I could see is wanting to back on that seat. Yeah. Just a little lumbar sport. Otherwise, man, I'm fairly no, impressed with like. Good, solid boat. It's pretty solid. I like the deck. I mean. You can wiggle it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Come on, fish. Hit this. Fish on. Oh. Keep reeling. Yeah, you got a, you got a fish. Oh, yeah. What is that? <laughs> Whoop. Things are looking up. So when you put them in there, cut it. This right there. Cut that. 
In most cases, it's real helpful if you bleed your fish after you catch them before they go into the cooler. It improves the quality of the meat and helps prevent spoilage. You want to take it? There he is. Well, that's a nice one, man. Yeah. Take that all day, bro. There he is. Down there. Yeah. All right. There's another one. That's a nice fish. Now three, that's a long ways from zero. Three is way two, better than two. Yeah, two you can picture having caught zero. Three, now three is like that's one person. You were limit. just catching them. Get him, get him, get him. There's a lot of weight, there's a lot of line on That it. was the one that was banging the bottom. Banging the bottom, we're digging bottom. So just it. woke him up. Don't lose him. It's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> Positive that's a lake trout, yep. based on where it was. Yep. Do you feel by the way he fights? Yep. He, right now he's just rolling his head back and forth. You know, he's like, he's doing this. They don't fight as good as like a king. Uh, not as fast? Not as fast, no. They don't take off like that. But when they're in cold water, man, they can really dig. Like, a lot of guys give them crap. They're like, oh, there's lake, lazy lake trout. And it's not like that. I mean, you can see him now. He's head shakes and trying to take lines. So it's fun. Like, I have a blast catching lake trout. A lot of guys look down at them. And I think it's cool because they're the only native fish that we had out here, you know, like game fish. No, that's why I think, like, just the history of it, man, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A nice trout. Dude, it's a nice fish, man. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> nice. Unbelievable, man. Dude, that is a that nice. That is a big trout. That is a nice fish, man. Natural reproduction fish. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so he's, got, he's not clipped. He's not clipped. But so wild, so, wild born, wild bred. a wild lake trout. Dude, that is gorgeous, man. Nice Yeah, trout. that was a cool fish. A cooler full of fish just seems to make about any boat run smoother. I don't know, it's something to, about weight and balance. And bringing this particular boat back to this lake to catch these fish creates a symmetry and satisfaction that I haven't felt in a long time. I never like to speak for anyone else, especially the dead, but I just gotta think that John Gary would be pleased if he could see this. A successful harvest carries a sense of satisfaction, but it also means you still have work to do after the boat's clean and on the trailer. So Grant and I head over to a municipal fish cleaning station to turn our lake trout into meat. You know, I was reading this quote where a guy said that a lake trout is like a Chicago man. He eats everything in sight. Yeah, they ate the first thing they saw this morning. You know it's pretty good to eat if you don't mind picking some bones. You ever go into a sushi restaurant and see hamachi kama? Just means yellowtail collar. It's this. Like I got friends at the restaurant, they won't accept the fish if it doesn't still have that on it. You gotta like put it on a grill. That's a stockfish. So when they stockfish, uh, the DNR stockfish, they clip this fin off. That's the adipose fin right there. You'll hear people say a fish is clipped. And that just means that it clipped like that, gone. You know what adipose means, don't you? I don't. Like extra. It's an extra fin. Yeah. My brother has an adipose nipple. I didn't know. Three nipples. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. To butt in here real quick, everything I just said about adipose fins is uh, not correct. Adipose means pertaining to fat or fatty. My brother really does have an extra nipple, though. I, before I came here, I was like re reviewing stuff that I had read so long ago about like histories of the Great Lakes, and it was saying that these used to get regularly 40, 50 pounds. Yeah. And it was in the 1870s 
that some dudes up in Mackinac had one that was 80 and they took it to a local priest. Those guys never lie. He confirmed that it was an 80 pound Laker. And it was saying by the 1890s, big ones were 20 pounds. Yeah. Uh, they depleted them that bad. From yeah. It's crazy to think how decimated they were and to how plentiful they are right now. And a lot of that has to do with the stocking programs we have set and uh, the control of the uh, sea lamprey. Lampreys had always been like, there's an Atlantic species of lamprey. Yeah. And it had always gotten into Lake Ontario, but it couldn't get over Niagara Falls. Yeah. And then when they improved that Welland Canal that goes around, yeah, it goes the, around falls, the falls, the, the Atlantic lampreys invaded the Great Lakes. And so these fish had had problems from overfishing and habitat degradation, but it was nothing compared to the lamprey. Yeah. I think in the 1860s, they really started to penetrate the lakes, but mm -hmm. they didn't explode until 1940. And once the lampreys exploded, the commercial harvest on lake trout went from 15 million pounds to 300,000 pounds. It knocked them back 98%. I mean, that was the thing that just laid waste to them. Yeah. That's kind of the whole story of the Great Lakes. Things are good, a new non-native comes in. The system gets upset, the system finally hits some kind of equilibrium. Yeah. It's like a giant experimental aquarium. We bring our cooler full of meat over to Grant's family's house to share the riches of Lake Michigan. Lake trout fillets used to be a staple around here. People bought them and sold them and made livings off them. But during the generation when the fish disappeared, it seems as though people's tastes changed. Some folks call them greasers or grease balls because they think the meat is too greasy to be palatable, which is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Lake trout are damn good eating, grilled, baked, boiled and especially smoked. Do you smoke a lot of fish? Yeah. Do you have like your own, like do you have a brine you swear by? Uh, I like to try different things. I do a lot of stuff with just brown sugar, salt. So I think we should do that, but then we'll put some, like I wet it down with rum and then garlic powder and red pepper flakes. You can't rush this brine. It needs a full night to work its magic and trying to get away with a shortcut just ruins a good batch of fish. Cap them up, put them in the fridge. Before you go to bed tonight, take the fish out. Yeah. It'll be like a slurry. Yeah. Fish slime, rum, sugar, salt. It's my favorite. Put them back in there. After the fillets soak overnight, they need a proper rinse and then a few hours to dry out before they go into the smoker. You want them to feel a little tacky. Good. Smoking. Oh yeah. You ever put them in your a smoker and then you see those white bubbles come up? Too hot, too fast is when you get those lines of that white, like custardy looking yeah. fat. It's because it's getting too hot too fast and something's breaking in there and expelling it. One an indicator of properly smoked fish is not having that. You know? It's like a legit smoke, right? Good. How was it? It's good. It's good. It's not fishy at all. That's like the criticism of Lakers, right? Yeah. They got, they're too oily, too fishy, but that, that's not an off-putting taste. That's definitely going to make the rotation. Bill. So you're going to go back to fishing out of that big, huge, fancy super boat of yours? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Never look back. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that was some of the most difficult fishing. I mean, I fish a lot of stuff. You mean like having like autopilot and like being able to follow a contour and I know how fast I'm going. I know exactly what direction I'm heading. I know what depth I want to follow. And there you're taking all that away and also making it a lot more narrow. Of course, I don't think anybody's ever, go. Well, I want to go out and pound lake trout and just, you know, this little, you know, Starcraft. It was tough to, it was tough to fish it. You know, when you go to another country for a while and you get back and you're so happy to hear someone speak English, but if you hadn't gone to the other country, yeah. you just take it for granted and you wouldn't care. Now, when you go back to your big fancy boat, oh, it'll, be like, it. it'll be like coming back and having someone say like, hey, can I help you with something? And then it'll be, it, like, it'll, oh my God, can you? It'll be different when you, when you hop on that boat, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna dance in the back. And I'm gonna do this, autopilot. Like, it's a blast. Thanks, man. Dude, anytime. I'm glad you hooked up. Perfect, man. Yeah, thanks again. Oh yeah, do it again. 
Fishing rarely goes the way you hope it will, especially when you're hoping for weather that's about as common as snow in July. But this time, everything kind of lined up for us. We lucked into a calm day, found native and even wild lake trout, and did right by them in the smoker. That's more than anyone can ask for, and it's a fitting start for this boat's new season of adventures. I'm headed back to Montana, but the boat is going north to Boyne City, Michigan. She'll meet up with the Latvian eagle himself, Giannis Putelis, sometimes known as Long Tong Yanni, and together with local guide Brian Kosminski, they will do their best to catch big brown trout in the dark during the famous hex hatch. If you've enjoyed this episode of Das Boat, make sure to check out the rest of the season and go back in time and check out Das Boat Season 1 on the Meat Eater YouTube page. And when you're there, make sure to subscribe. This is Das Boat.